Hi, thanks for joining me this evening. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Uh, we, nice yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, long time overdue, I think. Um, so can you introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your involvement with creative arts? Uh, my name's Robert Nichols. I've been involved with oh, just all sorts of things um, for a lot of, and been so unspecific for, for many, many years. Um, and I suppose um, it's creative. I guess it's arts, isn't it? Because I've, I've basically took over a fanzine, a football fanzine in, in the early 90s that had started in 1988. And the fanzine uh, being a magazine <laughs> written by fans. And at that time when we were doing, putting a fanzine together, it was football fanzine. Uh, but I'd come from music. I'd been, been in a band for a few years, singer with a band called Shrug. I'd, I'd written fanzines and I'd written four fanzines, music fanzines that is. And then I, I brought that into um, football fanzines and um, got, you encourage, you're encouraging people to publish the, the work really and to surprise themselves because they think, oh, uh, um, I might not be a writer, but then, oh, have you got an opinion about, about the football club? Well, yeah, we'll write it down and they write it down. And in those days, it was written down because that's the difference in, in the 80s and 90s. A lot of stuff was handwritten or, or typed, handwritten initially. There's not that many people had typewriters either, actually. So that we, we were before desktop publishing. So we, before, we were... Uh, we were like in the steam, the steam age, you know, um, and basically we used to do a fanzine, say we, because it was because it was impossible for one person to do it. It used to start roping lots of people to do bits of typing, because I think between about three of us, we we could probably use all that, all the fingers on our hands, as in I could do two and somebody else had like two finger typing and we would get there eventually. But if we did, we, 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 we wrongly did a fanzine for every match, not knowing the other clubs that had fanzines. It was a movement really right around the country. It went from punk music to football and soon every club had one or two fanzines. And we didn't, we didn't notice that the other clubs were doing them four or five times a year. And we were doing them twice. Uh, well, we're doing them once every two weeks. It was a bit of a, a foolish mistake really but there was a demand for it uh, loads of people wanted to write loads of people wanted to read so if if, if stuff was handwritten then we had to I, I had to spend like a, a whole week typing it and then a week putting it together so it was um uh, it, it, it was it became a full-time job and it became my full-time job and um from that i went on to do i was dragged kicking and screaming to do to do stuff online and be part of to, to run a message board where people talk to each other and chat to each other and you're like the referee in the middle or the teacher and and so you suddenly become really unpopular um uh, so i did all that at the same time i was still singing with shrug we started shrugging about in the middle of the 80s 85 86 and luckily we released a few records and got played on john peel show which was really <laughs> exciting to hear that only once sadly as far as i know and um, played lots of places around the country with a few decent bands like Chumbawamba and, and and then played with some Amer American and Canadian bands, Canadian band called No Means No, um, and British bands like Snuff, they, they, were, they, were all, they were all really good, they were all really good live acts at the time. And to, to, so basically we tried to be entertaining live and we like got loads of, we had no drummers at first and then eventually we had three drummers and we, we got to play in Germany and the promoters, um, in the venue we played in Germany, we were too loud because there was a, it was it was a, it was a, a music hall with a house behind it, and the people were complained, so we had to put all the drummers at the front of the stage. And through <laughs> that, it's sort of just like there was a fanzine by accident, doing things every every match, having to be a job. Through doing that, we realised actually that's what people want to see. They want to see the drummers at the front. So the drummers were at the front, and I was trying to look around the corner and jump around in front of them, and. Um, we, yeah, we so we, we and as you probably know, we 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 were lucky enough to be able to play in East Berlin as as the Berlin Wall was coming down. We were the first band to be able to go through Checkpoint Charlie without a visa, and we were there. We didn't know at the time, but we were there when the Stasi building was being raided. We were actually in East Berlin, so it was really it's really great to be sort of part of history and um, uh, exciting times. And well, and still play still play with Shrug now and. Um, and because we used to play more gigs, seemed to play more sort of tours in Europe than, than Britain, but to be visual, 
people won't get my accent. So I, I, I sort of got loads of props, um, which eventually became horses' heads and animal heads and things. Uh, there used to be uh, everything used to be homemade, but um, it just kept I just kept breaking it. <laughs> I'm pretty clumsy, and um, so I've done that for 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 many years. Not as much now as as uh, I'm getting too old to keep falling off stages and things like that because. I would say I'm quite clumsy, but I've always try to to do things to sort of, um, you know, the live performances. It is a performance. It's it's um it's something to like. That's why we were lucky at first and not and in, in getting on TV and things like that because if, we, if 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 somebody was looking for somebody to play on TV, then they were looking for somebody to be visual. So we were visual, and so we tried to do something, you know, to make it an exciting night out. And in the same way that with the fanzine, it's it's great to have supported so many people. Um, there's quite a few people who've gone on to, into media um, in various directions that that have uh, had the first taste of it through through the fanzine, and that's that's enormously pleasing. It makes you really proud. There's an author, Daniel Gray, who's um, done many books now, and his all his first published stuff was was in Blime is the Moon. Bob Fisher, he started writing Climbing to the Moon and now he's 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 multimedia in himself, you know, and, and just a couple of weeks ago, a, a, a guy got in touch with me and said, um, I'm the producer of um, Robert Peston's show on, on ITN. And I just wanted to thank you because my first ever byline was in was in Climbing to the Moon. So there's this complete heard? spectrum, you know, and it's it's I think it's because you can, as I said earlier, it's um something where it, it, it's opinion driven and and maybe it it, it breaks down a barrier and, make, and people um might not think that they, they can express themselves in that way and and then maybe surprise themselves and then and it, and it gives you the confidence and um and it, it must give you a bit of a buzz if you were to say it in something like that at the match there's there's one piece that, so at the match if you see somebody reading your work and there's one bit in it there's a, there's a cartoon and the guy who does the cartoon, he, he, he does it the wrong size, really. So we have to turn the page round. And he used to always say that if he was at the match and he saw somebody turn the fan scene round, he was going, oh, no, they're looking at my, looking at it. And, he, and then he, he would try not to look because he's thinking, will I laugh? Will I laugh? Will I? How, how quickly did they turn the page over? And it completely distracted him from the football match. So it's been, um, it's been good to be part of all those sort of, to be part of people's match day tradition. Um, for, for so many years until this season when he had to find a, a way of getting around that can't can't sell it on the streets anymore and was really thankful that so many people supported it to be uh, to 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 subscribe and so um and I, even there's a challenge as well because there used to be uh, a group of us that we used to put the fan scenes into the envelopes on a thursday because of social distancing i have to do it on myself <laughs> so um I, I, <laughs> it's back to how it how it might have been years ago when he was doing a, doing everything for myself. So I put all I put everything in in the post on a Thursday, um, and actually, there's one good thing is that I don't. Yeah, I can just relax on match day, um, or or is that right? Maybe I maybe I actually get more nervous about the match now because I'm not. You know, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not I don't think you'd be relaxing much much at the moment. So yeah, uh... exactly. Yeah, yeah. So. It, but managed to keep going, um, which I didn't know um, when the season came to a halt a, a year ago. It's, a, it's, a, it's almost exactly a year ago. Then thinking what what we're going to do, and um, we managed to managed to do it. You know, so does pe do people want us to keep going? Because actually, it was a good it, because of subscriptions. In a way, I felt um, I've only given you. I, I'll have to I'll have to like give lots of people money back. Or how do we do it? So it, it forced our hand to sort of think. Well, I've got to continue this till till the end of the season. And would 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 other people go for it as well? And they did. So um, it's really good. It's 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 been you know finding new ways to do things. Um, and, yeah, absolutely. And mm. you know, it's been great the amount of support that I think so many creative projects have had um to to yeah. make that kind of transition into whatever we're doing <laughs> whatever we, whatever state we're in um so something completely different tell us a little bit about discover middlesbrough yeah um i 
I used to be part of Discover Middlesbrough. I used, I remember that my first sort of, uh, the first thing I did was approach them and said, would you like me to show you Ayrson Park, the old football ground? Because I live at the old football ground. And I was involved in the 90s when um, we were selecting some artwork to represent the old football ground. It's a very rare thing around the country that lots of sports grounds have been knocked down, lots of arts establishments as well. Very, very few have been have been marked by anything. And there was something called percentage for art. I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm on a tangent here. Um, and from that percentage for art, uh, uh, an artist was was selected to, to to represent the football ground. And a guy called Neville Gaby did lots of sculptures and sculpture trail. So I. I, I got in touch with Discover Middlesbrough and showed people, did it, gave people a tour around the football ground. And from being involved a couple of times on Discover Middlesbrough, um, when the person who was uh, directing it left, I applied and said, could I, could I take over and, and, and maybe take it in different directions? And, and it, was, it was a council thing at first. And, and I think people at the council saw, saw the, um, the value of somebody not being in the council. It would break down a few barriers. So for the last few years, I've coordinated Discover Middlesbrough in October and that's really about telling people that uh, uh, winter's come in, dark nights, but don't worry you can still go out and do things, you can still you can still um, uh, go and do lots of stuff and, 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 and see events and be entertained and it actually came out of um, uh, those heritage open days they have around the country where they go into where, you, where buildings are opened up that are normally shut that it came out of that and then was it was so popular in Middlesbrough that we extended it and made it for a week and then made it to two weeks and then moved it as well into to, to embrace the school holidays so that families could do things and from that we we also thought well we could do something another part of the year as well and there's something called local history month in May which is something to do with uh, which is was from archives and and libraries around the country we thought we could build on that and make some a, a big festival through May if people want it, and they did, and um, done that for, I think, done them both for nearly ten years. Um, and last year we had a crisis there because we just I just actually finished programming. We were just about to press go for the we we get we have like programs that are, are, are done every year, and we were just about to have this program uh, published, and then thought. It's not going to go ahead, is it? Because <laughs> of COVID. So we reprogrammed it as a virtual program at the very last minute. In fact, we were still doing it as it was going ahead on May. And um, it was the most popular we've ever had. And it was the most important. And had lots of feedback with people saying, thank you so much. So we had like we had like talks. People were still learning how to do, do Zoom at that time. We know, how, everyone knows how to do that now. But we had talks, we had um, people who'd, who'd written history books people describing walks um, um, and, and doing l l talking about the civil war a battle off mask so um, lots of uh, things like that just different individuals um, and uh, yeah it was it was it was a really important thing to do and it kept people going and and and, and I think hopefully I think the idea is that you've got two sort of things in the year that that, that for any voluntary organization or a, or a, or a, a historian or anyone who, who runs an event like you like you yourself run events if, if you come into this umbrella then hopefully you get more attention and it might help you through the rest of the rest of the year if there's more people looking at if we advertise it and advertise it then then hopefully it helps has a knock-on effect through the year so um we're going to give it another go this May, and we've actually we've actually managed to get Stockton to to to, to join in as well. So we've got Stockton and Middlesbrough, um, and okay. yeah. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah, terrific. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the thing. It's you know, it's really opened up uh, events to to anyone who wants to come. Really. Yeah. Um, you know, um, people that you know, people all from all over the world um, yeah. can can partake, and uh, yeah, and I. I totally agree. I was very quick to um, move my club, the Red Room, online because I just thought people really, really needed it right then. Mm. And um, and it, you know, it's definitely been something. I mean, I could, I, I, I ran it every month for a while, and then it just got like too much. Um, yeah. Partly because there was no closing time or end. 
<laughs> so, we here at like seven o'clock in the morning thinking, well, we've been going for <laughs> nearly 12 hours now. Time to stop. Um, and sometimes I would actually pass out and my guests would just carry on without me. And, I, no. and the next morning, check the recording to see who'd, who'd actually uh, been there right till the end. Who'd survived. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Well, normally I ask kind of this kind of lockdown question of how it's affected your work, but I think we, we've kind of covered mm. that. Um, so I'm just going to ask you. I'm playing uh, gigs, obviously. <laughs> no, I know. I mean, that's that's the worst um, of it all. Absolutely. And you can't you can't rehearse and you can't record to get. Well, I can't. <laughs> not, I'm not clever enough to do anything like that. Yeah. Ollie Heffernan from the band has done four albums during COVID. He's had the best. He, he he finds it the best best time so he can just concentrate and do everything on his computer. But he's just clever. <laughs> yeah I mean something like that you need the tech you need the setup um, and I think like early on like lockdown one most yeah. people that we interviewed were like yeah great I can really focus on my work and think about yeah. practice and what I want to do but you know by now it's got like just let us out <laughs> let us party that's what we need hopefully whatever else happens we can do at least small outdoor events Mm. Um, you know, I'm happy enough to just be in a field with 23 people um, with a with a you know mm. a little bit of music that 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 do me that absolutely do me. You know, I did I did bring out a book last year though as well that, that and 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 COVID because of, as you were saying everyone was focusing in the first the first lockdown and I I thought oh god I feel really guilty because I, I'm not doing anything like this um, and I've had this idea for quite a while. Uh, I better do it now. So I, I just emailed everybody I could think of who was a Borough fan that I knew. And the replies that I got, I just I just asked them a simple question. I just asked them to tell me about your first game. Because I thought, first game, everybody, everyone has a first game. Not everyone remembers it, but everyone has one. And even if two people have gone to the same game, they've got had a different experience. And I got a load of replies. I thought, let's see how this works. And it worked brilliantly. And we had some massive descriptions like family histories um, and, and, and they're quite touching. And then we, I, I had somebody from, I had men and women, I had a, a woman from the 40s, a, a man from the 40s. So straight after the Second World War, up to a little kid who'd gone to his first game in 2005 and we got beaten at Wembley. And, and, he's, and, it, and he didn't give up. <laughs> so, so I was able to bring a, a book out of that and, and, and um, thought, well, wow, I, I thought, yeah, I've, I've, I've actually managed to do something positive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, it's like so important to, to capture all these stories, to not to not yeah. let them escape, you know. I mean, for my own family history, because my family all die young. So, you know, my parents are dead. Like most of my family is dead. Oh, no. And I so regret not having like written down and got got more stories. I mean, I don't really know much about my family at all now. Well, do you know what? Do you know what happened to me? I was very lucky in last year's um, local history month. Um, Tosh Tosh Warwick. I don't know whether you know him. He 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 played a trick on me. He managed to find and not let me know. Um, he found a recording of my grandma that was made in the 80, 1980s, and um, he 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 had the, these different oral histories, and he and he he, he got them. Through local history month, he, he, he would announce what day they were going to be on, and he said, "Are you going to listen to this one this day?" He said, "Oh, it's something to do with steelworks." I said, "Yeah, I'll listen to it," and then he put it on, and I thought, it "Sounds like my grandma. I remember my grandma." And, then, yeah. and it was, and it lasted for. He only put a clip on, but he gave me the whole thing, and it lasted for an hour, and it was unbelievable. And I, I was listening to my grandma talking about the First World War, and about and Middlesbrough in the First World War, and and um. Just and the and the recording was fantastic and it was it was just brilliant. Played to my dad, and I, and sent it to to um. It got me linked to. I haven't got that much family left either, and and but I I I got back in touch with family and cousins in America and a cousin in the South Coast through and sent them this recording and we've stayed in touch since. So it was another nice story really. <laughs> Yeah, brilliant. Well, I had a, I had a, a you know overwhelming discovery of treasure yesterday. Did you? Um, 
I, I posted up uh, on, on social media uh, pictures of me at this event from uh, 1980 um, uh, when I was in this event called Queen for a Day. Oh. I remember making the crown for that with my mum and uh, I knew I had it somewhere. So I was searching for that and I found a box of stuff of hers that I, I'd never looked through. Oh. I think I kind of thought it was all just wedding stuff. And, uh, and just photos of her that I'd never seen. Um, Cassettes from when we first got a cassette player when I was about six or seven that uh, I know is recordings of us opening our presents yeah. at Christmas with my nan, my granddad, my mum, my dad uh, on there. And most of all, like, cause my dad always told us that he, he could have played professional football for Wolves, right. um, but he turned them down and we kind of, you know, I treated it with some cynicism, but I found on Wolverhampton Wanderers letterhead yeah. letters to him, calling him to training, asking him to write back by return of post. And there's also one that yeah. says, uh, Mr. Ashley or someone says, you're not happy. Please come to training so that we can have a talk about this. So it really is true that he could have yeah. the rules and he decided not to. And so, yeah, that was amazing to have discovered that. that trip. Oh, that is that is a discovery, isn't it? That's that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Well, I, you know, I think we're just going to leave it there because that's, yeah. I think we've, uh, you know, it's kind of the pro point of this old project to uh, to capture all these stories because um, it is important, you know, nothing, nothing more important than individual stories. Been lovely talking to you and let's, you know, whenever we can, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll get <laughs> together out in the real world. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't yet, have we? <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. <laughs> All right, take care and uh, see you soon. See ya.